Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? So, retro gaming. It could be a very fun hobby, frustrating hobby, expensive hobby, irritating hobby. It could be a lot of things. But today we're going to be specifically talking about the ups and downs of retro gaming. Well, let's just get started. I would say one of the big upside is experiencing games with consoles that were before your time or you never got a chance to play before. Because, you know, back in my day, we always played games like Hudson's Houses, you know, arcade games, stuff like that. But we never really had our own copy. Well, this is where retro gaming comes in. Because these games are sold and because they're more available, they're easier to find and depending on what the title is, they're cheap. And like I said before, this could also apply to consoles. Now typically back in the day, people either had one console or at the very least a console and a portable gaming system. That was basically, you didn't have two gaming systems unless you were like rich or something like that. But of course with, you know, retro gaming and well, with that, a lot of these old school systems are more available. Now there's even more of a chance to, you know, enjoy the systems that you never got a chance to enjoy before. Of course, one big downside is those systems or those games can be quite expensive depending on what they are. Take take the Fairchild Channel app, for example. That is a very interesting system that was ahead of its time. It was basically the first game system that had different game cartridges, and this was before Atari 2600. I believe this console released in 1976, if I'm correct. So obviously this console was a bit ahead of its time. Now while this console is very interesting and has, a, it has sort of a deep history, it is very expensive. It's $200 to get the system alone. And then to get games on top of that is going to be even more expensive. So I would say that's one huge downside of retro gaming. But then again, there are other ways to find, you know, games and old consoles and stuff like that. I mean, granted, in today's retro gaming market, going to thrift stores and flea markets and stuff like that, it's basically impossible to find a good deal or a decent game. But here's where the upside comes in, because all this stuff is old and, it, and stuff was popular back in the day, somebody you may know may have an old game console or an old game system. Now, I'm not saying be an asshole about this, but, you know, just, hey, let people know that you're interested. You know, tell your mailman if he has an old game console, give it to you, or ask your doctor, or I don't know, Uber driver or something if they have an old game console. Let people know that you're into this, because, again, while, the, while things have gotten crazy over the years when it comes to retro gaming, the stuff is still out there. And if you're passionate enough and you work hard, you could find it. Now, speaking of passion and working hard, another upside I'd like to talk about is that retro gaming could bring generations together. Some people play game consoles during different generations, different decades. You know, people experience gaming in different ways. Like right now, I'm about to hook up the NES. That was a console that was way before my time. I mean, shit, people like my dad to play the NES. No offense to Pops out there if you're listening, but yeah. I would say for the most part that retro gaming brings generations together for, for you know, a reason. Like, one of my favorite systems is, again, the GameCube. And this shouldn't weird me out, but it does. People were, you know, adults. People were in college when the GameCube first came out. Me, I just think of it as an old system. Some people think of it as a modern system. That's crazy to me, but, you know, still, I, I think you get the point by now. What I'm saying is what well, could be modern consoles for some people could be old school consoles for others. And while those two different people experience the same console at different times, they could still bond over the games on that console. And this doesn't even have to apply to retro gaming, it could just apply to gaming in general. I'd say for the most part that gaming just brings people together, you know, in general. I know that sounds corny, but it, it's true. Oh, by the way, the footage that you're seeing right now is a uh, retro game store that just opened up by me. I'm called Retro Replay, and my apologies, the uh, opening was kind of packed, so my apologies if the footage is a bit messed up, but anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, my apologies if this video is a bit rambly or went off too long on certain subjects. My apologies for that, but hey, if you want to, like, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and tell me down below. What's your favorite decade? 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s? I don't know. Tell me down in the comments, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Oh shit, oh shit, man. Oh shit.